Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including software updates, Cybertruck production updates, faster superchargers confirmed, and big news for Tesla battery tech and supply, so let's get into it. First up today, we're frequently talking about Tesla software updates and features coming to their cars, and that's because Tesla is constantly improving things. Their vehicle software and app gets better over time, and over time they have been adding more customization to the Tesla app. For example, a recent update added the ability to change your charging schedule from the app. Previously, this was only possible through the screen in vehicle. The latest update coming soon is in response to record heat waves. Teslas have a feature to automatically prevent cabin overheating when parked in extremely hot temperatures temperatures, but this has only been an on or off option. Now, according to Elon Musk, quote, Tesla's automatic cabin overheat protection should make a real difference with record heat waves. Ability to adjust activation temperature coming with next software release. I'm still not entirely sure how adjusting the temperature lower or higher will make a difference when it's hotter than normal, since cabin overheat protection will turn on once a high temperature is reached regardless, but it's great to be able to change it. You'll be able to set your own temperature, and this will help you save a lot of energy and time. Instead of your car being 120 degrees inside and having to cool from 120 down to 70, it will be set to whatever you need as a baseline, and then work down from there when preconditioning. Similarly, if you're not using the car much at all, you can set it to a higher temperature so it's not wasting energy. Energy. Always great to see new updates coming to the Tesla app and software on screen. It's one of the best parts about a Tesla that they get better over the course of ownership. Next up today, a couple updates about the Cybertruck. This truck has been one of Tesla's most notoriously delayed products, and one of the main reasons people notice is because other companies are shipping their own trucks. The Rivian R1T and Ford F-150 Lightning have begun a few thousand first deliveries, and it makes people wonder if Tesla is losing their opportunity. Elon Musk doesn't think that these delays will affect anything, and each week we see small progress from Tesla. We know that Idra has assembled the world's largest gigapress at 9,000 tons, and that this is the gigapress Tesla will be using for the Cybertruck body. Of course, that hasn't made it to Tesla's factory yet, but it shows that the equipment is in the early stages and is getting ready to go. This past week, though, the Cybertruck drive unit equipment was reportedly ordered by Tesla. This came from a German publication noting that Tesla has begun ordering machines to make the Cybertruck drive unit from German manufacturers. They are the same manufacturers that supply the equipment for Giga Berlin and Giga Shanghai. The timeline for these reports said that they are being built now and scheduled to produce first parts at Giga Texas in July of 2023. The capacity of these machines is reportedly 750,000 drive units per year. This hasn't been confirmed by other sources, but it lines up with Elon's most recent timelines, saying that the Cybertruck design is finalized and will enter production in mid-2023. It's great to see these updates, and as I've said before, if Tesla, suppliers, and Elon are aiming for July of 2023, that's looking good for Cybertruck production truly occurring by late 2023. Next up today, an update for Tesla's future superchargers. Right now, Tesla has three main types of superchargers, and the only one we see them putting up new is V3. This is their fastest charger that can reach speeds up to 250 kilowatts. Elon Musk and others at Tesla have hinted at them working on a 350 kilowatt charger, and now we're getting updates in that regard. Tesla is reportedly working on a V4 supercharger, and the dimensions have been confirmed. Here's a comparison by at Marco RP Tesla. You can see that it is taller and thinner than the current V3 charging stall from Tesla. Quote, Drive Tesla has been able to obtain a photo of the new V4 supercharger. To protect the identity of our source, we can't publish the photo, but we can describe what it looks like. According to them, it looks exactly like Tesla's mega charger that they are installing for the Tesla Semi, but includes the normal connector located higher on the charger. The mega charger stall is the latest from Tesla, so it makes sense that a future, quicker V4 charger would share a lot of the same architecture and look the same. This would simplify manufacturing for Tesla, who is rapidly expanding their supercharger now network each day. Reportedly, prior to this, V3 superchargers are expected to get a speed bump up to 324 kilowatts this year, and then V3 will come shortly after that. That would immediately mean that tons of Tesla chargers are close to 350 kilowatts, and then all new ones would likely be 350 kilowatts or more. Tesla's vehicles are currently limited in top charging speeds, so we'll have to see how that would work out, but faster charging is always welcomed. Next up today, a few really important updates about batteries from Tesla's main supplier. Batteries are the main thing keeping Tesla ahead of the pack in the future for electric cars. They are constantly working on battery supply, and their biggest supplier, Panasonic, is expanding quite a bit. For one, they are officially moving forward on a new battery cell factory in Kansas, specifically to supply Tesla with 4680 cells. This is Tesla's new cell form factor for the Model Y and supposedly the Cybertruck as well. Quote, Governor Laura Kelly has now made the project official. Previously, Panasonic was considering Oakland Oklahoma or Kansas for this factory, as they are close to Texas and would be directly supplying Tesla's newest Giga Texas factory. 
The governor confirmed the location and a Japanese publication confirmed that, quote, Panasonic Holdings will invest several billion dollars in a second US electric vehicle battery factory in Kansas to supply a new high capacity battery for Tesla. Production capacity isn't yet listed, but they are planning to build 4680 cells there. That means that this factory will be exclusively supplying Tesla from what we can tell, since no other brands are using this form factor yet. This is a big development and great to see. It is bringing a lot of battery manufacturing to the US and will be supplying tons of Teslas in the near future. Another update from Panasonic this week may be even bigger though. According to a Reuters report, quote, Panasonic Energy Co., a major Tesla supplier, is working on new technology to increase battery energy density by a fifth by 2030. What this means is that you can get more battery in the same amount of space. So the same battery pack that Tesla currently ships would get more range simply because there is more charge available in the same size. Some quick math there would mean a 20% increase. On a Model Y, this means that the current 330 mile EPA range would go up to 396 miles of range. A vehicle getting 250 miles of range would be able to get 300 miles with no vehicle upgrades aside from the battery density increase. That's a huge increase and this would enable a couple things. For one, the Model Y could get close to or top 400 miles with the help of Panasonic and Tesla constantly innovating on efficiency. It could also enable cars to be lighter and require less battery cells, making them cheaper. It's a small piece on a long list of things that will enable future $25,000 EVs. As for how Panasonic plans to achieve this, they say, quote, Panasonic Energy, a core Panasonic Holdings unit, plans to achieve these gains by using a new mix of additives to allow individual cells to run at a higher voltage without damaging the battery's performance. They want to increase voltage from 4.2 up to 4.5 or 4.6, and they, quote, think the whole world view in terms of what's possible for EVs would change. These changes will happen gradually throughout the next decade, but it's another example of how much innovation is happening with EV batteries. There are new battery cell form factors, new chemistries, and increasing densities, all enabling scaling and increased ranges on these cars. We're just getting started. Next up today, some big news for Tesla's FSD effort. Tesla's head of AI has left the company. Back in March of this year, Andre Karpathy announced that he was going on a sabbatical. Elon Musk first announced it saying, quote, at Karpathy is on around a four month sabbatical. Karpathy then tweeted saying, quote, taking some time off to rest and travel after almost five years at Tesla, especially excited to get focused time to resharpen my technical edge and train some neural nets. Though I already miss all the robots and GPU slash dojo clusters and looking forward to having them at my fingertips again. At the time, many were concerned and many noticed the pattern of a sabbatical followed by a departure from Tesla, and that is what happened here. On July 13th, he tweeted saying, quote, it's been a great pleasure to help Tesla towards its goals over the last five years and a difficult decision to part ways. In that time, Autopilot graduated from lane keeping to city streets, and I look forward to seeing the exceptionally strong Autopilot team continue that momentum. Elon Musk responded immediately saying, thanks for everything you have done for Tesla. It has been an honor working with you. As for what he'll be doing when leaving Tesla, he said, quote, I have no concrete plans for what's next, but look to spend more time revisiting my long-term passions around technical work and AI, open source, and education. This is definitely something that worries Tesla investors, as Tesla is planning for and talking about full self-driving being achieved this year. Their head of AI, who has been in charge of these efforts, is now leaving. As to this, though, Andre tweeted saying, quote, important to keep in mind that the autopilot team is hundreds of strong engineers who very much know what they're doing, just don't have my public visibility. I was only one part of that effort and I think get an outsized spotlight cast on me because I do. It seems that his departure, while impactful, doesn't truly affect the trajectory of Tesla's FSD efforts down the line. Elon is constantly working with the team on it, and Tesla has been hard at work as he has been on sabbatical. Now they will just continue as they have been. At the same time though, Gary Black, a well-known Tesla investor, said, quote, while Uber Bulls will downplay this, Andre wouldn't leave if FSD was on the verge of attaining full self-driving level four, so I have to assume it's not close. Definitely an interesting perspective there. Obviously, we'll have to see how this plays out going forward. As for the FSD beta, Elon said on July 13th that 10.13 goes to internal beta tomorrow, external next week. Should handle Chuck's complex left turn. Beta V11 hopefully end of next month, which just amounts to incorporating highway. Importance of V11 has been reduced by all the 10.x releases. We're already mostly at V11. Progress is continuing, and I'm excited to see where the FSD beta goes from here. Hopefully we'll get some substantial updates this year. Next up today, some updates about Tesla Model Y production. Over at Gigatech, 
Texas, Tesla has been shipping and making Model Ys with 4680 and 2170 cells. It seems 2170s might be the focus to scale that factory as they are cell constrained for 4680s. New reports based on drone flyovers of Giga Texas are showing that Tesla is transporting over 150 Model Ys per day out of that factory. According to Joe Tegtmeyer, Model Y production ramping is noticeably hitting a new gear, with transports moving more than 150 cars per day now and new cars filing right in behind them. North and West irrigation system installation beginning now as we discussed in the past few videos, so it's great to see this work begin. He is estimating production around 1,000 cars per week at Giga Texas and expects Tesla to share that info soon, like they did with Giga Berlin. This will develop a lot in the coming weeks, but it's great to see production ramping at Giga Texas for real. This should help Tesla catch up a lot on Model Ys this quarter and the rest of the year. Over at Giga Berlin, Tesla is doing something very interesting with a stockpile of Model Ys. During the Giga Berlin test phase and prior to the start of true production, Tesla was building a good amount of Model Ys in Berlin. They were produced under temporary permits and Tesla was not allowed to sell them. Many estimate that they made at least 2,000 Model Ys that they aren't allowed to sell. Now Tesla has been approved to sell those vehicles. Quote, Tesla is free to process bodies that were created during the period of testing the operational capacity and to sell them if they are marketable. This is very obviously a good thing as these cars won't be going to waste. Assuming they were produced once quality passed inspections, they are just as good as new ones. That will help Tesla fulfill some orders out of Giga Berlin and will prevent them from having to recycle a bunch of Model Ys that work perfectly fine but were built early. Next up today, there's an update to a pretty big program Tesla is proceeding with in California. Tesla has partnered with PG&E to allow Tesla Powerwall owners to participate in a virtual power plant. These are, quote, used in concert to provide grid services and avoid the use of polluting and expensive peaker power plants. Powerwall owners would have the option to earn compensation for helping to stabilize the grid during an event. PG&E has now officially released an update saying, quote, on June 22nd, Tesla invited approximately 25,000 PG&E customers with Powerwalls to join the VPP and help form the world's largest distributed battery. In the first two weeks of the new program, more than 3,000 customers have expressed interest in enrolling, with more than 1,500 customers officially in the program. 1,500 Powerwall owners are already in this program, and with an average of two power walls per customer, that means this California virtual power plant already has 13 megawatts of capacity. PG&E says that if all eligible Powerwall owners join, this would expand to, quote, the energy generated by a small power plant. There are only small updates here, but soon enough we'll likely see a small effect on this. To start, the impact of 1,500 customers will be small, but during a blackout event, anything can help. This will be huge for the future of energy, and it's a big win for Tesla's solar product. This will be especially big once it expands to more of California and then to other states in the near future. Tesla's senior vice president of powertrain and energy engineering said, quote, enabling Powerwall customers to support the grid and their community is a necessary and important part of accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. We seek to partner with utilities and regulators everywhere to unlock the full potential of storage to bring more renewable, resilient, and less costly electricity to everyone. Clean energy generation is proving much more versatile and also cheaper. According to a recent report by the International Renewable Energy Agency, in 2021, nearly two-thirds of new renewable power added was cheaper than the cheapest coal-fired power plants in G20 countries. The director of IRENA said, renewables are by far the cheapest form of power today. 2022 is a stark example of just how economically viable new renewable power generation has become. Renewable power frees economies from volatile fossil fuel prices and imports, curbs energy costs, and enhances market resilience, even more so if today's energy crunch continues. While a temporary crisis response might be necessary in the current situation, excuses to soften climate goals will not hold mid to long term. Today's situation is a devastating reminder that renewables and energy saving are the future. Renewables are making more and more sense each day, and Tesla is proving that not only do they help generate cheaper electricity, but they can help stabilize the grid and earn money for owners. Last up today, a few updates about other automakers. Polestar reported a 125% increase in EV sales during the first half of 2022. Quote, the Swedish company, which listed on the NASDAQ New York Stock Exchange in late June, delivered approximately 21,200 cars in the first six months of 2022, more than doubling deliveries from 9,510 cars in the same period in 2021, an increase of almost 125%. They reportedly are sitting on a backlog of 50,000 orders as well. Great to see Polestar doing well here. Canoe, an EV startup yet to make their first deliveries of their truck and van, got a recent boost. They received an order of at least $4,500 
delivery EVs from Walmart and possibly up to 10,000 total. Canoe tweeted saying, quote, we welcome Walmart as the newest customer of our EVs and are proud to electrify the fleets of one of the world's largest companies and help them to achieve their sustainability goals. It looks like from the renders, Canoe is planning to ship their lifestyle vehicle for Walmart as opposed to their multi-purpose delivery vehicle, which is interesting to see. I actually have this lifestyle vehicle on order because I think the design is wild and I want to be in line if they really do come to production. But regarding the timeline of that vehicle, they said production is set for Q4 2022 for the lifestyle vehicle. Likely these will be going to Walmart first and customers like that, but we'll have to see. Hyundai officially unveiled the Ionic 6 and it has some great specs. This is the sedan follow-up to the Ionic 5 and Hyundai says, quote, the Ionic 6 will be one of the most energy efficient EVs on the road when it hits the market. It will ship with a 53 kilowatt hour or 77.4 kilowatt hour battery and deliver up to 600 10 kilometers or 379 miles WLTP range on a charge. Loosely converted to EPA, that's around 338 miles. That's really great and one of the best ranges we've seen from a company actually shipping EVs in these price ranges. It will get a 0 to 60 in 5.1 seconds for the performance edition and charge up to 350 kilowatts. There's a lot more to it, but the next announcement will be pricing. Production is scheduled for this quarter and it will be launching first in Asia and Europe soon and then North America in 2023. That's all the latest Tesla news for today. So in the meantime, if you want to see what it looks like when a Tesla or EV hits 400,000 or a million miles, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.